everyone. Welcome back to Show Me How to Win. We are in Taipei International Book Exhibition and we are in Board Game Nation and Measles booth. Next to me is Alan. Alan is the founder of BGM, Board Game Nation. And Alan is here to show me 12 Rivers. Hey, Alan, tell me about 12 Rivers. How did it come about? Uh, Twelve Rivers 是我在二零一九年底的时候，在一个 Playtest 上面玩到的一个游戏。然后那个时候我就觉得，哇，这个机制非常的有趣。然后，所以我们那时候在隔年就把它签下来，然后去开始开发它。然后找了很很棒的台湾的画师去做它的美术，然后去找它的这个特殊的材质，因为它这个厚度要有那个合谷的感觉，所以花了一些时间去做这些媒合，然后在这几年的时间把它做出来，这样。So you saw the unique mechanic with the flow, and it's so interesting. You decided that you're gonna develop it. So in 2019, it's 2023 now. It's been a long time. You guys spent a long time developing it. 对，我们花了很多时间，因为他那时候我们面临的比较大的问题是我们想要做出那个厚度的差距。那但是一方面的话就是。用用纸材的时候，我们那时候测试，但是因为纸材比较硬，那个珠珠弹的时候，有时候撞击力会太大，会比较容易喷飞。所以我们后来去选找到了这个比较特别的的呃 EVA 这个材质。那那 EVA 的话，它一般来说又是不会在上面做做印刷的，所以我们在后面要在上面印刷，又花了一点时间去克服它。这样，对。Well, the result is beautiful. So, uh, Alan just told me how to play earlier in this game. Everybody, we are in a village where the gods give us blessing in marble forms, right? So uh, we play over five rounds. Every round, uh, we receive marbles from the gods randomly. They're placed in the 12 different slots. Uh, but you can see what, uh, which marble goes in which slot, right? So some marbles are worth more points and some marbles are worth less points. There are five different colors. So from point one, one point to five points, right? And then uh, the players will have, it's kind of like worker placement. They have three workers and they will be choosing where they put their workers in different slots to try to catch the blessing. So. If you want to go upstream, which is more likely that you will get the marble you want, the blessing you want, you have to spend more resource car, camping car, to go there. Even if you receive multiple blessings, you can only pick one. So if you don't have a lot of resource cars, you can go a little lower downstream. You can still get the trickle down blessing. When you receive the marbles, you first have to put the marbles in your alpaca. And your alpaca only has a space for six slots. Normally, you will only get six, uh, three blessings per round. However, in certain occasions, you might get more than one. Uh, so you have to put you have to have enough space in your alpaca before you can put them on the villagers. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, so because. 每一回合，你都可以把 Apoka 身上的这些宝珠放到不同的村民身上，但是你也可以选择不放，因为游戏也有一些小小的目标，对。然后这些目标的话，是可能你让这个 Apoka 身上有相同颜色的珠珠的话，你就会额外的得到这个分数。这是一个小小的竞速系统的规则，对。OK OK， so there are spaces that you can get villagers. At the bottom of the map. Also, every round, certain amount of fairies will show up in particular spots. So those fairies will also be helpful to you to do some extra bonus for you. So uh, you have to basically make sure you get the right marbles for your villagers. You have to make sure you get a lot of points, and you have to make sure you balance out the camping cars too, because. You only start with so much, and you don't gain camping cars unless you get villagers. Certain villagers give you more cars, but maybe less points. And at the end of five rounds, whoever has the most points wins. Correct? Uh, 就每一回合的话，就是玩家会有三个工人可以放，然后可以放在呃上山上去拿资源，或是放在村庄去拿村民，然后想办法让资源放到村民的身上。只有游戏结束，只有村民身上的资源才会给分，这样子。对。
游戏里面，因为卡片的资源是稀缺的，它只有在某些位置跟某些跟拿到村民的时候会提供你额外的这个卡片，但是村民又是分数的来源，所以其实它是有一点，就是你在取得这个游戏中需要的资源，跟游戏最终局的分数奖励的时的中间的一个小小的拉扯，这样子，对。Okay, so this is show me how to win. You have to tell me strategies on how to win this game. It sounds simple, but there's actually a lot of tips that you can give us. What are some of the things we should look out for when we are placing our warriors to receive the blessing? This game, it basically has fairy. This side, its strength is very clear. Then, so you can go to a good fairy. This is one of the ideas. Then, the second thing is you can think to save your fairy card first, and then the next game you can use more fairy cards to get more fairy cards. 去在位置上去压过对手，这是第二个想法。第三个想法是直接去锁定一些高分珠的位置，然后直接把高分珠先抢下来，这是第三个想法。那这三个想法的话，在这个游戏中，就是玩家中间，你自己去取出最适合你的一个平衡点。So I'm going first. I should probably try to get the best blessing, right? What are some of the things I can do, uh, other than trying to get the highest point blessing? 那除了直接拿最高分的珠之外，你也可以考虑去湖的位置，去有机会一次拿到最多的珠珠。呃，因为如果大家都争先恐后的去拿村民的话，那也许这一回合会有很多的珠珠落流流入湖中。那反而这个位置也许是一个你用更少的资源却可以拿到跟高分珠相差不不相差甚小的一个位置，这样子。But if I go for that spot, I should make sure I get a villager at least, so that my alpaca doesn't get full, right? 对，这是一个想法，就是，呃，你因为因为我们每一回合结束的时候，你必须要把 alpaca 身上的猪猪移动到村民身上。对，那你可以保留一部分下来，但是总而言之，就是你会不会希望你下一回合的 alpaca 身上是全满的，然后只有你下一回合拿到的猪猪都只能丢掉？对，这件事情，对。Okay, so I'm not going first. Everybody's getting the best blessing, and they got the river spot. What are some of the other spaces I can go for? Okay, 这边的话呢，有两个部分的想法。第一个是，如果你手上的资源足够的话，你可以考虑去呃村民的村庄区的最后一个位置，去保证你下一回合是第一个玩家起始玩家去抢高分的猪猪。或者是，如果你这时候手上资源也没有那么足够的话，你也可以考虑的是去一些现在立刻可以拿到资源的位置，然后让先囤积一下你的资源，让下一回合你有更好的机会去扭转这个颓势。这样。So try to go for a player order in the next round, or try to get as many camping cards as I can, right? What about the fairy cards? 哦、oh, ，对，也。这个也也没错，就是因为 fairy 卡的强弱很明显，所以如果在你在顺位不利的情况下，场上有一些很好的 fairy 卡的话，那即使花费很多资源，你也可以考虑去直接把它拿下来。那这个这个是有机会在之后帮帮你做一个蛮大逆转的一个可能性。这样。So what are the different fairies? What do they do, and what's which one's the best one? 呃，基本上有两个 fairy 是大家通常比较喜欢的、比较强的，就是一个是云朵君灵。云朵君灵的话是你可以不需要消耗任何资源，它就可以让你到场上的任何一个凹槽，甚等于是你可能不需要资源就可以直接拿一个五分的宝珠。对，那另外一个的话是河水精灵。河水精灵的话是原本你只能 keep 一个宝珠，那你现在就可以 keep 两个。对，去取代一个。那有时候你就可以在可能两分两呃两个资源或三个资源去一次拿到两个还不错的珠珠这样子。对。So that's the cloud fairy and the river fairy, right? 对。没错，就是 cloud fairy 跟 river fairy。What about the other three? What do they do? OK， 其他的珠珠也有不同的效果。他们像像是这个蘑菇精灵的话，是可以让你把本来村民的需求，它是有指定的颜色，它可以变成是你可以放任意颜色的宝珠上去，让你有更有弹性。那像是这个山峰精灵的话，是可以让你呢在游戏的过程中，本来我们每只有在每一回合结束的时候，可以把 alpaca 身上的宝珠移动到村民身上。那这个的话，可以让你在游戏的中途就可以做这个置换，就让你讲白一点，就让你不会有爆仓的可能性。对，那最后的话是这个篝火精灵，篝火精灵的话是单纯的让你抵免一个呃一个资源卡的效果，比较弱势一些。相对于云朵精灵的话，对。
So basically, they are two that are more powerful. If you see them, try to get them. But maybe in other times, other situations, like for example, the one that lets you change the requirement of the villager can be useful in certain situations if it's good, if it's applicable, right? 对，呃，当然是这样，没错。但因为这个精灵有强弱，听起来好像不太合理。但是因为我们的精灵它位置也是随机的，所以相对的，有可能很强的精灵它需要花很高的资源，那你不见得有那么多资源去。同时又要拿精灵，又同时又要想着等一下要去拿猪猪或是拿村民的时候，那这个时候你就可能会考虑次一点的精灵，但是它可能很便宜，只需要一个资源你就可以拿回来的这样子。对。Okay, so it's in the middle of the game. I feel like I'm winning. What are some of the things I should do to keep my win? 如果你是游戏的领先者，你应该要做的事情其实就是观察你的对手，然后去觉得谁是最有可能追上追上你的。尽可能去卡住他的位置，对，然后去让他阻断他的策略。比方说，他可能想要看起来，他想要某一个颜色的猪猪，就尽可能去竞争他。Even 这需要消耗你更多的资源，但是你是领先者，你可以，你可以肆无忌惮的这样做，对。Because you can see which blessing is where, and you can see what villager they have. 对，对，没错。所以你可以看得到，这些都是公开资讯。在这个状况下，你就尽可能去阻碍你的对手。What about if I'm losing? What should I do? Okay, 如果你是落后者，然后你，但是你手上只是有很多资源，可是你是在顺位不利的状况下，那这个时候你可能要考虑的是，为什么你会这顺在顺位上这么不利？那你是不是因为你在抢顺位的时候没有注意到这件事情？那你可是是不是要在呃顺位上面去踩下一回合的起始玩家，然后？去保证你下一回合可以拿到更高分的猪猪。对，那另外一个东西就是你要去判断说你的落后是导来来自的原因是哪里？是你都没有高分的猪吗？还是说你的村民的组合是比较弱势的？如果是村民组合弱势，你要你要想办法是去把你的村民组合去 build 起来，去找出你跟村民可以 combo 在一起的地方，这样。So yeah, maybe pay attention to the combination of the villager if. You are behind, and maybe you can try to go get the right villager to help you boost your points. 对，对，你可以想办法从村民那边做出组合去拉高你的分数，然后或者是抢顺位去拿到更好的宝珠去，那呃，在下一回拿到更好的宝珠去把分数追上来。Okay, so it sounds really interesting. I can't wait to play this. This is a prototype, though, we're showing here. So. Where can we get this? How do we get it? Okay, 我们在今年的下半年，呃，年底年尾的时候会有 Kickstarter 的计划。那如果一切顺利的话，我们希望在那上面会有很多 surprise 的一些 stretch goal 给大家。这样，对。Can you tell me a little bit about the stretch goal? Like, what are what does it entail? Is it gonna make the game harder, or is it gonna be more components? Okay, 基本上当然是有。配件的升级啊，或者是呃，我们可能会考虑做一些更 gamer 的一些 expansion 啊，让这个游戏的策略度跟重玩性更提高。对，那也有可能会在这个材质上面做一些更不同的优化，这样子。嗯。Well, I'm super looking forward to the Kickstarter of Twelve Rivers. Alan, thank you so much for showing me how to play and how to win Twelve Rivers, and thank you guys for watching. Bye.